right, so Moritz is going to take us through uh, Resolve Workflow um, and how to go a little bit deeper into color. Um, so I'm going to let you run with this. Thanks very much. Name is Moritz Fortmann, um, from Germany originally, as you might be able to tell. I work for Black Magic Design as a product specialist, um, focused on Resolve, because I've been working as a colorist for the last six years, sort of half in New York, half here in the city. And the last three years, I've been using uh, Resolve. So, um, yeah, and since uh, October, I work for Black Magic Design as a product specialist, mainly looking after Latin America, actually. Um, but, you know, if I'm, if I'm here and we have events like this, and I want to thank Noah for the invitation, I'm, I'm helping out also locally. Mm, actually be in Brazil on Monday and the week after in Mexico. So, <laughs> a bit crazy. So it's nice to do something here. Um, I'll be... Uh, Showing you Resolve 12 today. Obviously, NAV is coming up, so I don't know what we'll be presented with, but I'm excited. Uh, but this is our you know, up-to-date, sort of latest and greatest. Um, how many are here sort of have experience with Resolve, just to get an idea? That's cool, very cool. So just for those who have not, I will give a brief sort of overview of you know, what the application can do. And then, um, then the idea was to take you through you know, a short project, sort of workflow scenario, something coming from Final Cut, for example, or Premiere, doing a quick conform, color correction, export, or round trip, you know, just to, sh to show resolve in a collab collaborative uh, environment. Um, as you can see here, I mean, this is our, our interface. Um, da Vinci Resolve is split up in four parts, media, edit, color, and deliver. It's pretty self-explaining. Media is for your imports, conform, and so forth, media management, edit to edit. It's a you know, standard editor, um, multi-layer timeline, and so forth. Um, our color corrector that we're most known for, and then uh, deliver page where you create all your deliverables, whatever it may be. I mean, um, in a bit more detail, so on the media page, you have your browser here. Here's what you have visible. You, know, you see all your disks, your network, and so forth. You can already preview stuff sort of on the browser level. Down here you have the media pool, and it's literally as simple as drag and drop stuff into the media, media pool, so that becomes automatically part of the project. Something really cool I like about it, you can drag and drop entire folder structures. So if you have already your project you know, uh, organized on a drive, and uh, it'll just you know, reflect exactly as is uh, sort of within Resolve. And just, uh, you know, in here you do your logging, you can uh, attach metadata and so forth, organize your clips. Um, from here to go into edit, very simple, I'm just dumping all these shots into a timeline. And, uh, you know, go straight into our editor. And then, as you can see, you know, just regular editor, multi-layer timeline. Here we can drag and drop. Um, we try to make uh, sort of the transition for creators as easy as possible. So for, for me, I came from Quantel, and it literally took me a day so to learn it and to, to do my first job. For editors, we're trying to do the same. You know, if you happen to do a job on here, you can actually go into your project settings and change the keyboard so it works more like Final Cut or Avid or, or Premiere, for that matter. Um, so our editor, you know, basic editing, audio functions, some audio plugins, and so forth. Um, we have an effects library with our dissolves, titles. So it's sort of, you know, the stuff you would expect. And uh, then that, I mean, all these menus are completely interactive. So if you're done with your edit or your conform, you would go into color. That's where you do your color correct. Well, primary tools, secondary keys, vignettes, and so forth, curves. Um, still store, no tree. And then last but not least, deliver, where you create your deliverables. And uh, you know, I'll be showing later, but here we have a bunch of presets already set for you know, FCP round trip, for example, or if you want to go you know, optimized for Vimeo. Vimeo. Um, so just trying to make it really as, as easy and intuitive as uh, it can be. So the project I want to walk you through today is um, is a short. It was shot by uh, Benjamin Brown. Um, he's one of our beta testers for our cameras. For, and he was testing the um, Ursa Mini, the uh, 4.6K. And um, 
beautiful short. Um, I actually I transcoded the material, so it was shot in raw. But you know, for demo purposes, I, I show the stuff on my laptop sometimes. So I just uh, transcoded everything to ProRes. Uh, but originally, it was shot in uh, in our raw format, in DNG format. And uh, you know, just keep in mind that that's still a beta camera, so it's not the the one shipping. So just to keep that in mind, but. Uh, yeah, so in the idea is the following. So imagine, you know, you've already, you've received an EDL, you conformed your piece, you did a color correct, and then, you know, a day before delivery, director decides to do some changes to the cut, and, you know, you, you confront it with a new conform, a new timeline, and, uh, you know, now all the work you've already done, you kind of need to transfer to that new EDL. And that's sort of what I'm going to talk you through right now. So... Um, we're going to import AF or XML, and here on my drive I have this, um, this uh, Final Cut uh, um, XML. And, um, and here, I mean, we have uh, different scenarios, so also this would be exactly the workflow you'd be going through if you go from offline to online. So if you'd be working with you know, your, your proxies and then go to the, to the raw reds or, or DNGs or whatever it may be, you do here ignore file extensions so it, you know, it kind of it, as long as uh, time code and so forth matches, then it'll relink. In this case, you know, the cut has been done on the ProRes, so, and we'll be working on the ProRes, so it's not um, strictly an offline, online uh, example, but uh, just to give you an idea. I'm just going to turn down the volume. So this is, um, you can see it, uh, it dropped um, all the media into my media pool. It created the timeline. And we can now, you know, go into our editor and play this back. You can see it's still ungraded. It's, uh, yeah, ungraded still, exactly. And now the idea of um, transferring color correct. So I've basically color corrected the whole thing already, but on a slightly different cut. And now, you know, how do I um, apply all this, this work that I've already done to that new cut? So uh, Resolve has an elegant way of uh, solving that problem. So you go to your, your media page, to your timeline, and if we right-click it and go to the top option here, we have something called Color Trace, and that will work with um, timelines that already exist sort of in the Resolve world. It'll also work with uh, you know, color decision lists, for example, so it's not, not only uh, within Resolve, but also you know, translates to other, other formats like the CDL. But in this case, I have a previous project where I've already done a correction. And uh, we just uh, navigate to that project, to the timeline, hit continue. And we can now see that all the shots that are green, so Resolve automatically goes, OK, I've, I've had this shot. We've already worked on this. I have, a, I have a color setting, or whatever it may be, actually. And you can now transfer that from one cut to the next. Um, if that didn't work out, if there was new shots, or if there's a new shot but you wanted to use um, the same color correct then on another shot, then you could go into manual mode and then you can you know, manually drag, drag uh, the settings onto the clips. Mm, but in this case, automatic works well for me because it's literally the same, same shots are present in this cut than in the old one. And we go copy, grade, and exit. And if we now go to our timeline, we can see that uh, you know, stuff has been updated, color corrected, and um, you know, we can now go into color, manipulate that, and so forth. So if we take into our color correct, we can see now there's my note tree, my color corrections, and so forth. Mm. Kind of show you the, uh, the menu a bit more in depth. So we have um, here our note tree, Nodes, kind of like layers. That's why we do different steps of the color correct, you know, just to kind of keep it organized. Do your primary on node one, then if you want to stylize it, put a vignette or so forth, or a key, put that on a, on a separate node. Um, we have here a still store. You can grab a still that um, incorporates all the settings. So you can now go to another shot if you, you know, have a repeated shot and just copy and paste uh, um, the correction with everything, including vignettes and so forth, keys. Um, Tool-wise, so you have a storyboard, sort of just a, a representation of your edit. You have a timeline here. You, you cannot mess up the edit in here, so everything is locked. It's just a representation of it. If you wanted to do an editorial change, you'll go back to edit. And um, here we have our primary tools, so lift, gamma, gain, offset. You know, you can work in different ways. 
have bars here as well. Then our secondary, secondary tools, we have a curve here, curve editor, we have HSL key, Luma key, and so forth. We can draw vignettes. Um, we have an excellent tracker and uh, blur tools and so forth. Um, also, just a side note, uh, the, the version I'm showing you today is the free version. So this one, you know, um, has a few limitations, not that many. So the limitations, uh, in a nutshell, is uh, use of GPUs. So the free one only uses one GPU versus the uh, paid one that can use multiple. Then here you can see this is grayed out 3D tools, the so stereoscopic 3D tools. Um, another limitation is um, a noise reduction. It's not part of the free version. Power windows? Power windows are, yeah. So everything. I mean, I have actually, when I switched to Resolve, done my first five projects on the free version. And back then it was, it was uh, still limited to HD. Now it's Ultra HD, so you can actually output stuff in Ultra HD. Another limitation is um, you know, shared database. I mean, you can, you, know, you can share projects here. I just export a project file, <laughs> import it somewhere else. But you know, for you know, a post house, they actually would like to access the same database. Uh, so that's some of the limitations, but they're very minor. I mean, you can literally do entire projects on the, on the free version. Um, here on the right bottom, we have, uh, in this case here, our keyframes, but also what's really nice for color correct in particular is you have waveform, you have parade, vector scope, and so forth. So if that happened to be your tool and you don't have an external device, you know, you can measure sort of what you do within here. Um, I'd just like to take one shot and show you kind of deconstruct or construct the shot, actually grade the shot here, just to kind of take you through you know, a sort of a normal, normal procedure of uh, how someone might go about grading a shot like this. So I'm actually going to reset all of this. And we present it with the, um, you know, with the, the raw log file. And I'm going to start with a basic uh, lift and gain adjustment, just get my blacks and whites sort of in the right place. And all of this is done, can be done via the interface. We have our own panel, which is amazing, but also th third-party panels work. You know, the element and so forth, tangent wave, actually very nice, um, very nice tools to work with Resolve. So there's different options. Um, so lift gamma gain adjustment, bit of color separation. And again, you know, you have different ways of manipulating that. So you can go into your bars here. There's different ways. Um, I'd like to... Maybe apply a bit of saturation here. And uh, we can go to our curves and apply a bit of an S-curve just to give it you know, a bit more contrast, a bit more of a filmic look. And we can see quite quickly, you know, that we... And obviously there's, um, you know, LUTs, um, even for that camera, different cameras have their, provide their own LUTs, which... Um, you can use, uh, you know, there's different workflow scenarios where you create LUTs on, you know, for your dailies that you might want to incorporate here. And all of that is possible. So you can uh, apply LUTs on a node base. You can apply it to all your footage. I mean, there's complete flexibility. If I have time, I like to start from scratch because that way I know what I have and really can get sort of the maximum out of the footage, I believe. But, you know, there's different, it depends on what sort of your workflow scenario is. So if we're happy so if with this uh, base correction, then now we can might move more and move on a bit, you know, stylize the image or you know even kind of improve it a bit more. So I would move on to a, a next node, just to kind of also to kind of keep things separate and organized. And uh, let's say we cool the shot down, and I'm really going sort of all across the board just with offset, so you can see what we've done. If I wanted to protect my blacks, for example. Um, you know, I don't want to contaminate the, the blacks with some blue. We can uh, use a key, just a simple luminance key, and just really just to put the key on, you know, and just really uh, protect the blacks so they stay nice and clean. And soften that, something like that. Um, we cool the shot down, but let's say I want to actually... Uh, maintain so the warmth of her skin and maybe the other sort of yellowish elements in the in the image what we can do we can create a layer node and what a layer node does it sort of it reference back to the the previous node or actually any node in 
in your color correct. So it's really nice that at any point you can go, oh, the original image had a nice red, which I kind of dialed out because we went really desaturated. I can always go back and pull that back in. So now this node looks at the uh, previous node, and I can now apply a key of a skin tone, soften that a lot. And you can see now it combines. It combines sort of this, blue, this bluish tint, but it maintains the, the, the skin tone that I, that I want. Um, another really common thing to do, you know, it always depends on time and you know, budgets and workflow and so forth. But uh, what's nice is you know, just to create a vignette, for example, to put a bit of additional light into a face. Just as an example. Can adjust the softness, and uh, in this case, we go to our tracker and uh, you know track the motion. And then in the other direction, and it's also new as our 3D tracker, so it actually you know tries to kind of maintain the track even though she's turning her head and so forth in perspective. How is it tracking her head? Say it again. How is it tracking? Based on, I mean, hue, saturation, luminance, and you know. And then, you know, if you wanted to kind of go in and uh, finesse sort of the track uh, manually, you can. I mean, you can keyframe. I just want to do a few changes here, so I switch this to frame, and reposition it here. That's all good. And then maybe as she turns her head, we can move it over a tiny bit. And then as she walks out, obviously it doesn't have anything to, to hold on to. So I'm just going to do that manually so it actually moves out of the frame completely. And what we can do now is you know, work within that area so we can you know, throw a little bit of light onto her face. It's not really long. So now everything I do sort of happens within that correction, uh, within that selection. Mm, let's save. Sure. Let's change the shape also of that vignette. Make it a little wider. There we go. You know, to give you an idea, a bit of uh, mid-tone detail, for example, and maybe not as so bright. You setting keyframes and you change the shape, like it's got the track, and then you manipulate on top of it and say, you know, until you set a keyframe, it'll just stay that. Exactly. Okay, and you have different ways. I mean, uh, within that. Uh, Tracker, so if I switch that to frame, that's almost its own set of keyframes. And if you then wanted to go in and yet manipulate it even more, you can go into your keyframes here on the right hand side and, uh, you know, and do a layer based or node based um, keyframing. And then to finish off that shot, we can uh, maybe just apply an overall vignette, often done. Kind of again, give it a bit more filmic look. We can just darken down the edges a bit and apply um, some um, defocus, for example. So you can see something like that, very subtle. And we have two minutes. Okay, yeah, we're almost done. And a bit of uh, defocus. And there you go. Yep, you have yet. Um, only other thing I was actually about to show is. Uh, versions you know you you were with a client and you know they ask you you know can you change this can you change that and then you end up with tons of versions how to um, organize them a very nice tool I like uh, within the application is that you can by command Y you can save it as a version and it's sort of non-visible it's just attached to that one shot so if I go in now and we add um, another vignette and we create a bunch of versions let's just quickly do a uh, black and white. Save that as a. Oh, what did I do? Hide. Uh, save that as a version, and let's do just one more. Mm, let's go back to 50 here, and let's uh, make a low con look. Something like that. Kind of that that hipster <laughs> in, in Instagram setting. <laughs> and save that. And uh, you can very quickly then show the client the different versions. So, and you can flick through them, you know, just by um, 
So and it's just very quick way of you know creating versions, and actually can also you can have that on auto, so it automatically um, saves every time a version, every time you revisit a shot. So it's just a it's a really handy thing um, in the in the world of colorists. And then last but not least, you know you you're happy with your final film, you move on to the deliver page, and that's where you you know decide on where where to go from here. So um, we have here a little drop down menu which has a bunch of presets that you can choose. Um, you know, round trip, it would, you know, export new ProReses if, if you wanted to, you know, finish it in Final Cut, for example, or Avid. And you just load those settings, applies them here, and then uh, add to render queue and export. I mean, this kind of stuff is, you know, very similar in multiple um, applications. What I like here, you still have sort of access to your editor in the export menu. So if you wanted, only wanted to export a selection, you just hit in and out and, um, yeah, that's sort of it. Um, any any questions? Any? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when you round trip and bring back um, the, the you know this back into Final Cut, the, the, does it make a new clip? Does it render that, or can it just come in as a soft clip into Final Clip? In other words, you know what I mean? Like it gets the color. Yeah, I mean it'll it'll render a new clip in it this case. A new clip. Mm -hmm. So how does it deal with transition? Like, are the dissolves when it comes back across? Are the dissolves still going to be in Final Cut Pro? Yeah, I mean, it would protect the. Uh, I would export it with tails. So I mean, but that's I mean that's important for your entire workflow, right? So you need those tails also when you bring stuff in. So, um, but. Uh, it's like if you're like XML, you come mm -hmm. XML one way, you come back. Like, or if you have a multicam, obviously you're going to be. Take a oh, sorry. If you take a multi-cam and you go out of Final Cut X, you go into here, you do your business. Mm -hmm. ah, I want to keep editing. Now, all of a sudden, you're coming back with just a flattened clip. You're, you know, how do you how do you deal with all that? I guess. Sam, do you know? Because like with you, actually, with your project, it was the first time I did a conform of a multi multi-cam edit from Final Cut to Resolve and. It did respect that. So we actually had the multi-cam in Resolve, no. but I actually don't know. Um, I actually don't know how it works. Uh, not the round trip. Okay, so the round trip can be tricky. One thing that I would recommend doing is uh, if you're worried, test the round trip and see if it works. If it doesn't work, export as a single file. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, and then and then come back and conform with it. Uh, there can be some holes. The additional thing, you may have spatial conform issues as well. So the best thing to do if you run into spatial conform issues is set your um, spatial conform inside those clips to fill and then you should be able to get around that as well. But one, but one way is works fine. Like, even if I had some keys or some different effects in Final Cut, does, does a one way work fine? Like, in other words, if I go Final Cut and I've got some plugin that's cleaning something up or something, like all that stuff comes across? I mean, it's, you know, it's with, with every application. It's okay. not going to be never one-to-one. -one. And as a colorist, I go, if you have something that's uh, your application specific, I request Render them as uh, VFX. I mean, in that's, some yeah. case, yeah, the, the other trick is go and export as a QuickTime, and then for the special clips, you export those with handles, and then drop those back in separately if you run into crazy issues and you're having round trip issues. So you, so you don't actually export just an XML out of Final Cut, you actually export the clip and then try to color correct on top of that without all the edit points and stuff? Or oh. <laughs> so basically, the, the experience I've had with Resolve for the most part is that uh, it can be very clean except when it's not. In the event that it's not, um, bring it in, it usually comes in pretty clean and you can clean up the Resolve timeline and do the conform in Resolve. It's got some really solid edit features for that. Once you basically got it the way that you want it, there's probably it's unlikely you're going to have a transition on every clip and all of this other stuff. So exporting it as a single file is going to allow you to get 95% of the way there. For the specific clips where you've added some stuff that you need to come back into Final Cut, take those individual clips, export those as individual clips, bring back those into Final Cut 10. If they have handles, then you can drop in that and your transitions and everything will still be applied. It's a little bit longer. You can also take the risk and depending on how you've done things, uh, the round trip may be clean, but it may not sometimes too. Last question, this relates to the same thing actually. If I have multiple layers, then I guess I would just go out multiple, like if I have split screens, like my show has a ton of split screens or like almost multi-cam breakouts, like four images over one, but they're just squares. So like I would come out as different layers and I have to come back in and reconform that. 
actually in Resolve, if you have spritz, if you if you did it as transforms, right? Are you using them as transforms? Simple transforms. Yeah. So if it says simple transforms, you can have that information come into Resolve, and that's going to export as part of your single layer. So like that'll get done. You don't need to worry about that as much. Cool. Thank you. We'll take two more. We've actually got to wrap up in a little bit, but here we go. I was actually just going to add on to what he was saying about using the transforms and when you go back, if you use the FCP XML round trip to go back, it will render it at full size and in the XML back in Final Cut, it will reapply the transform a lot of the time. I've had a few issues with it, but for the most part, um, I tend to go to Resolve, do color, go back to Final Cut and finish in Final Cut. And most of it seems to come across very cleanly. Awesome. Uh, using the split instead of the single. Yeah, I mean, it should work. And when it doesn't, do that. You know, like that's <laughs> the thing. There's, there's always a workaround. And the workaround is do the round trip, see how it comes back in. For the most part, you should be fine. And when you're not, just finish and resolve and then, and then do the trick that I, I kind of mentioned. But there's always multiple ways to the same place. Um, so anybody else? So we want time for one last question from Moritz. Okay, no, we don't. So now, uh, everybody, a big round of applause for Moritz. Resolve, Final Cut, and Resolve do work very well together.